Kristen. And I'm Bethany. And this is Looking for the Middle, a Christian girl's guide to modern dating. We are just two single girls trying to help you navigate dating well. So welcome to another episode. (laughs) Today's episode, I'm very excited about. This is one of the ones that I mentioned in the teaser for this season that I was really excited about. I think this is going to be a great episode. It's going to be good. We have a lot to talk about Yes, we do. But first, we have my question of the day. Lay it on me. What is something that you love but you wish you hated? Ooh, carbs. (laughs) Does that count? (laughs) (laughs) You answered that so quickly. I never met a carb I didn't like, but sometimes I wish I did. (laughs) Yes, that's that's a great answer. Pasta, Mm -hmm. bread. No, I said, wait. Something I love that I wish I hated. That's yes, what it is. Yes, yes. I thought I asked it the other way around for no, a second. No, I love them. Something I love but that I wish I hated. My waistline wishes I hated them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Shopping Why? for clothes because my bank account would oh. love me. <laughs> I don't wish I hated it, though. That's probably harsh. No, because then if I hated it, then I would just buy what I actually needed. And then... Yeah. All all of the clothes hanging in my closet would be getting in your face right now. We're trying to record this. I'm just thinking about this pair of boots that's digging into my rib cage from this shelf back here. (laughs) Wouldn't be as much of a problem. One day we're not going to record in the closet. We'll have a real studio soon. We'll be a real girl. Hopefully, yeah, we'll be. What a song! I'm a real boy. Or I'm a what is it? (laughs) I don't know what I'm talking about. I I like it from Little Mermaid, but I've never seen Little Mermaid. I feel like I was never allowed to watch it. Oh, you were one of those. I've never seen Little Mermaid. We're having a movie night soon. It's a fantastic movie. <laughs> Why? Okay, yes. Especially if you're going to try to make me watch Pride and Prejudice. You're definitely <sighs> watching The Little Mermaid. Well, I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a kid. And then once I grew up, I just never watched it. But oh my gosh. The yeah. second one I actually like better than the first one. I don't, I don't even hardly know the story. All I know is apparently Ariel had some respect issues for her parents. <laughs> and my parents didn't think I needed any ideas in that area. So they didn't let me watch it. <laughs> I can see why that would be a concern, <laughs> considering little fourth grade Bethany's story from, did you tell that on here, or was I that did. you just telling me? No. Okay. But the, yeah, the well, guy who yeah. sent his friend to ask me out. Why don't you send him over here, and I'll tell him I'll think about it. <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, go back to, I think it was How to two Get Asked ep- Out? Yeah. A couple two episodes ago. ago. Yeah. It'll be worth <laughs> just it for that story, if not anything Yes. Else. Okay, but today. Wow, that was a really... Strange rabbit trail. That's okay. Hey, that's what we're here for. Too far. Okay, sorry. Far. My bad. You tried. I, I respect the attempt. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a for effort. A for effort. my mom always told me too. <laughs> you really were homeschooled. <laughs> I so was. <laughs> I was too. It's fine. Oh, it's my fine. word. If you didn't know we were homeschooled, there's probably a lot that makes sense to you right probably now that didn't before. before. Like, oh, my oh, word. Oh, my gosh. We get it now. I get it. Okay. So let's... <laughs> I'm the one it in asking somehow. to reel it in. Yeah, yes. for real. Normally, you're having to reel me in. <laughs> Let's talk about the importance of being your own person. Okay. In a relationship, before a relationship, right as you're getting into a relationship, all the things. Because, yeah, I think it's different. Or at least in my mind, it is sometimes. Being your own person before you're dating anyone. But then also being your own person once you're dating someone or even married. Because some things that I would tell you not to do when before when you're single or you're looking to date someone would be different. Like I would tell you to do the opposite thing once you're in a serious relationship or married. Okay, so first thing, what would you tell someone who is maybe they're interested in a guy but they're not dating him and we're talking about just be you. What would you tell someone? This is my soapbox I know, that's why I wanted to like, set you up well. Yes, thank you for that. My first piece of advice would be don't change your interests or who you are just so you can become a mirror image of whatever guy you're dating or become the ideal version of what you know the guy you're interested in wants. Right. It doesn't even have to be, like you said, a mirror image of the guy you're dating or, or the guy you want to ask you out. Yeah. If you're constantly trying to change who you are or what you like so that a guy will like you, goodness, you're just going to be constantly disappointed and stressed. Yeah, because you're having to keep up an image that somebody that, of somebody that you're not actually... You're acting. Yeah. It's like you're constantly performing. And putting on a front. And, and you're having to remember, like, what is it, what's the saying? Like, if you tell the truth, you never have to remember anything. 
Mm, yeah. So it's kind of the same thing here. If you're not, you're, because that's what that is. You're not being honest. You're not being truthful. And so you're constantly having to wonder, do I like this or do I not? Because I can't remember because I know I don't really like it. I just yeah. have to act like I do. Yeah, because you want to impress him. And it's important. You're still an individual. You are yes. still a person that God created uniquely. So don't discount that or try to modify that or change that just to please a guy. Right. I'm getting ahead of myself. No. But it's so important. And this isn't in the notes. I'm just going <laughs> off the off the wall here. But you want a guy who likes you for you. That's yeah. the greatest thing ever when a guy just likes who you are, your interests, your hobbies, your quirks, your sense of humor, not this person you're turning into to try to please him. Yeah. It's the best thing ever when a guy just accepts you for who you are. So that would be my first thing. And yeah. keeping in mind, too, if you are trying to change for a guy all the time, especially if you do this a lot with more mm-hmm. than one guy. If it's a pattern of your dating life. Yes. It's, this is not going to bode well for your friendships. Mm-mm. I mean, just because no. I've been on the other side of that. And I think we all knew at least one girl in high school totally. who did this. Who every time she dated a guy, she totally changed the way she dressed, the way she talked, what she was interested in. Or she dropped all her friends. That was what I was going to say, too. And then every time they you broke never, up, yeah. then she comes back and you're like, okay, which version of you is this now? Yeah, because they want to just totally jump into that, leave everything else behind, but then they want you to be there to catch them when they come back. Yeah, don't treat your friends as your backup plan, that you hang out with them because you don't have anything better, a.k.a. a guy, and then you want them to just be there when you break up with a guy as your fallback. That's not fair. No. That, and that's not okay. And you're going to lose a lot of friends in the long run if oh, you begin yeah. to do that totally. consistently. Because that's not true friendship. No. And it's basically you've taken this guy or this idea of a guy and made an idol out of him. You've put this undue pressure and worth on him, which is something we talk about a lot. That's not his job. That's not his role. And you're trying to please him as if he were God. God's the one who calls you to change and to mold you into someone new, which is the image of him, to be more like him. When you're doing that for a guy, now we're not talking about sin issues. If you have a sin issue that you need, someone's pointing out that you need to change, that's different. I'm talking about preferential things yeah. that aren't a right or wrong issue. Now, this is one place where I would say once you're in a serious relationship or you're married, this is where I would kind of have some different advice because if it is a preferential thing, then out of love and respect and selflessness towards your spouse or your serious boyfriend, you're going to compromise on some of those preferences. You're not going to change your preferences entirely before you ever start dating someone. But once you're in a serious relationship, there's going to be compromise. But it's not you pretending like you never liked whatever that thing was beforehand. You're just willing to give it up. Practical example, we were actually talking with one of our friends. I don't even know how we totally got on the subject. But we were talking about makeup and wearing makeup. Both of us like to wear makeup. And we wear it for us. I, I need the, the help on my face area. <laughs> so I wear makeup. But he mentioned, like, he likes girls that don't wear a ton of makeup. Now, the, the example of, like, both sides of this, if either of us was to say, okay, well, I'm not going to wear makeup anymore because I want him. I'm going to act like I don't like that because I want him to be interested. That's what we're saying. Don't do that. Wear makeup. You like wearing makeup and it is not a sin issue. Wear some makeup. It's fine. But if you are seriously dating a guy or you're married and your husband's like, you know, I really like it when you don't wear much makeup. That's a place where you would, or I would, I'm not going to say that you have to. I'm, I will talk about me here. I would say, okay, you know what? I really like wearing makeup, but I love you. And I know that's what you prefer. So I will compromise on that but I'm not going to pretend like I never liked it does that make sense yeah no that makes a lot of sense you you don't want to just change it ahead of time just to get him to like you but when you get to a point where I came into this relationship as I am but I know you really like this so I'm gonna do that sometimes I'm not gonna do it all the time I'm not gonna say that I like myself better without makeup if I don't, I'm going to be honest, but there's that sense of compromise when you're in a serious relationship exactly. that you don't have to do just to get a guy's attention. And you shouldn't do just to get right. a guy's attention. Be yourself. And that's the most cliche line in the book. <laughs> but seriously, guys we've talked to over and over love girls who are confident in themselves and who yeah. they are. And that's so attractive. Go for that rather than trying to key or trying to gear your certain traits or characteristics towards what you think he thinks is attractive. Yeah. 
if that makes sense. Yeah. You are who God created you to be. And he did that for a reason. And so be that. Be who you are. And while you're single. Can y'all hear my dog snoring in the background? <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think oh it's picking gosh. up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but. I don't remember what I was going to say now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can totally cut all that out. No, but be who God created you to be. And while you're single, remember that there's more to that than just looking for the next person to date. You don't have to just sit around and wait. Be who you are. We talk about it in that episode last season, Girl, you Live Your Life, but I don't remember all of the things we talked about. So you recap some for us. What <laughs> okay. were some of the big ones we yeah, kind of we talked, on? I mean, in a nutshell, do what you want to do. I know that sounds selfish and think about it this way. You can go to travel to the places you want to go yeah. and you can live where you want to live and you can drive the car you want to drive. drive. The car. I'm living like, example real, that's of that. The perfect example. Yeah, I went and bought a Mustang last year because I could, and it was my money and my decision. And you've always wanted I've to drive. I've always that car. wanted one for ten years, and it's like, why not now? So I did. You can hang out with whoever you want to. You can spend your money the way you want to. You're the only person involved in your decision making. That's more what we, when we say. Do what you want to do. Yeah. It's not just this reckless. No, do you know, whatever, but no. You this is a very unique time in your life, especially if you're out of college and you're living on your own. Yeah. That you are the only one you're responsible for. Right. So, take advantage of that. I know now granted, are there perks to being married and being in a relationship? Absolutely, but I also know that I've talked to enough of my married friends and friends who are seriously dating that they're experiencing, oh, we have to compromise cuz he wants to go do this, so I'm not going to be able to do this, so I'm going to go with him or we couldn't right. spend our money this way because we, you know, have to pay for this instead or there are compromises you have to make once you're at that stage of life that you don't necessarily have to make right now. So why not enjoy it? Yep. Right? Agreed. Now, honestly, it's really time, easy for us to say that, yes, though. <laughs> I, it's very, very simple for me to read off my notes here and make this sound super great and easy and fantastic. And we have our lives all together. We oh. never worry about this. Wrong. Real talk here <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> it's just not that easy. I, I mean, I was talking to Bethany about this earlier tonight. I was talking to my roommate, Lauren, about this before Bethany got here. This has been a really, the past, you know, few months, I'd say, I've had a really hard time accepting this. I'm mm-hmm. just going to be really real. We've had several guys. conversations. Yeah. Both of us, I think. I don't... Yeah. Because you just sit there like... I've, Lauren and I were watching um, To All the Boys I've Loved Before on Netflix the other night. I haven't night. watched that. It's such a good movie. But we were sitting there and I looked over at her halfway through the movie and was like, Lauren, I really want a boyfriend. She was like, I really want a boyfriend too. And that's all we said. <laughs> and then we just kept watching the movie. Yeah. And it's not comforting to just be like well I can do whatever I want and I'm the only one I'm accountable to yes those are great things but that doesn't always make it easier to be like yeah but I don't have anybody to go out with on Friday night and I don't have somebody texting me every day and I don't you know have someone to say oh yes I'm dating somebody when all these people are asking me are you seeing someone yeah knowing the right things to say and really truly believing them 100% when the rubber meets the road are very different things it's really easy for us to say them and right now it sounds even to me saying it sometimes it sounds like such a like consolation prize it's like you don't have anyone who wants to hang out with you on the weekends but you can go spend your money how you want like really (laughs) you're like that's what you're gonna tell me and I know that and like it's hard it's not what you want necessarily but it's where God has you and so you just have to trust his character even when you don't understand it but I guarantee you if you ask go ask your parents go ask your mentors go ask your married friends I guarantee you if you ask them what advice they had that is what they would tell you to do I guarantee you almost to a man that's what they would say you just have to trust them (laughs) trust God it's, uh, it's easy for us to say God's in control. He wants what's best for you. He's increasing your dependence on him. But then for us to really go with that is hard. Yeah. We struggle with that just as much as any of you do. I promise. Yeah. Because we want to be genuine in what we're saying. It's not that we don't know that this is true. And we believe it. Yeah. I do believe it. But it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to believe when that's not really what your focus is on. I yeah. I use the analogy of I feel like there's a drawbridge between my my knowledge of something and my belief, like my I feel that this is true. And sometimes the drawbridge is down and they're talking great and everything's flowing and it, you know, I know it and I believe it and I'm feeling, you know, and all of it's 
cohesive. And there are sometimes both sides of the bridge are just straight up in the air. And yep. there's, there's just nothing going on between the two. Well, and think of a drawbridge. When you have both sides down, yes, there's a clear path to what you want on the other side of that river. But the ship that needs to cross can't get through. So what is it that God wants to teach you that is that ship crossing through there? That, yeah, there maybe has to be that disconnect between here and what you want. But the only way for that thing, for you to learn that thing, is for the sides to be up and for that ship to go through. And you'll learn that thing. And then after it goes through, the sides go back down and you can go across. I love that so much. <laughs> she didn't tell me she was going to say that. I didn't well, even I tell her about the analogy. Drawbridge analogy. That was... So yeah, that was really encouraging to me. Oh, Thank good. <laughs> Getting all sappy on you guys. <laughs> no, but seriously though, we we wanted to be real on this and we wanted to be very straightforward that it is, like Bethany said, it's so easy for us to say all this from where we're sitting and to read off of our notes and know deep down that this is true. And it's another thing when you're experiencing to re- all of this to really cling to it. Yeah. And and we're in the trenches with you. Like oh, I just I sure. wanted like to really, and I'm not trying to like belabor this point, but we want you to know like we get it, a hundred percent. We do. We sit together on a Friday night with ice cream, and watch a sappy movie and say, oh, <laughs> why can't that be me? Yes, we have our and, moments too. <laughs> yes, we have we not do. got this no, figured out. We don't. So. We are trying to figure out how to navigate dating well. We're trying to help you navigate dating exactly. well. And that includes singleness and leading up to dating and during dating and ending dating and all the things. All of the parts We're right of it. there with you. But I think kind of going back to the original point of, you know, whatever being, the original point whatever was. the original point was. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kind of reeling it back in. What it really comes down to especially when you're having these moments of weakness of, oh, I just really want a boyfriend. What is your motivation behind wanting to be with someone? Yes. Is it because you just want somebody to hang out with on the weekends and you want somebody who will text you good morning or... That's the best, isn't it? It really I'm is. I'm sorry, like, but... Good morning, beautiful text. Oh, my word. I'm done. Like, yeah, I'm just My done. day's made. Right exactly. Right there. Or you want to be with somebody so you can tell the 42 married women at church that keep hounding you about your relational life that you're finally dating somebody. Like, I get it. That's that's a valid thing to want to be able to do. You but, only have 42? I know. I mean, how do you this week? That? Oh, okay. I was going to say, you need to teach me your tricks because 42 is <laughs> a good number. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But seriously, though, are those the only reasons why you want to be with somebody? Because those are definitely, I don't think they're bad reasons, but that shouldn't be Should the be driving defining, force. Yeah. No. Uh, One of my favorite quotes I've ever heard about this was from Millie Welsh, who spoke at a women's conference I went to. I was a senior in college, so it's, what, five years ago? And she said, you should want to be with someone with whom you can serve God better together than you can on your own. Yep. That's that's your motivation. That's the driving force. That's the motivation of, like, when I am with this guy, I feel like when we're together, we are able to accomplish so much more for the kingdom than I ever could on my own. Mm -hmm. Great. And yes, I get to hang out with him on weekends and he texts me good morning and I get to show him off at church to the 42 or 112 or however many. <laughs> How many of those ladies there How are? How many there are. And that's great. So, But I really would encourage you if you're kind of struggling and you're in the same spot we are in, because I have to ask myself this question all the time, like, okay, Kristen, why do you want a boyfriend? And so I would say, ask yourself that question and really think about it and pray through that and ask God to make that really clear to you. And because this isn't a bad thing to want. Mm -mm. It is okay to want a boyfriend. These are good desires to have. There's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them whatsoever, but it really boils down to your motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting to get married, wanting to be in a relationship in and of itself is not a right or wrong thing. It's right to want that. It's a good thing. It's from God to want to be married and honor and glorify him. It's okay if you don't want that. God has gifted some people and created some people to be single and they won't have that same desire that we do. They're not going to constantly be thinking about getting married all of the time. And that's okay too. And I, I mean, it's got to be hard for those people just as much to constantly be hounded about when are you going to get together with someone. It's okay. that It's not right or wrong to want to be married or not. Your motivation behind whether you want to or not is what matters. If you're seeking Christ and his kingdom above all, when you're so focused on Jesus that your heart's desire is to glorify him above everything else, then your desires will be good and right because they your desire will be to obey him and he will honor that. But your desire will be so focused on 
honoring him and doing what he wants for your life and following his will for your life, that whether or not you get married becomes secondary. And that's where it needs to be. Absolutely. That's what really matters here, I think. That's the takeaway. Yeah. So all of that to say, whether it's you're kind of on the brink of maybe getting into a relationship with a guy or you're not anywhere close to that right now, the point is be who God created you to be with the qualities he created you to have and the characteristics that he created you to have and do that in a way that honor and glorifies him and have that as your motivation above everything else. Yes. And that's when you're going to be on the right path and the right trajectory. So It's the only time you will be. Yeah. So yeah, just keep that before you keep looking to Jesus and it will be good. It might always feel good, but it will be good yes. for your good. So for your good. That's yes. what we will leave you with today. Yes. Okay. That was a fun episode. It was fun. I'm really glad we, we have a lot we can take home. Yes, yeah, and seriously. put into practice for we, ourselves too. We, I'm gonna need to listen to this one on my right? own like two or three times, <laughs> just as a little reminder. Oh man. Well, guys, be sure to check back on Friday where we will have another couch cast. Yep. We've got some fun things coming up. Be sure if you haven't already, go to our website and sign up to get on our email list. We've got some fun resources that are going to be available in the next few weeks, months. Hopefully not too long. Yeah, hopefully not too long. We're working on it. (laughs) Also, just to... I didn't tell you I was going to tease this, so if you want (laughs) to cut it out, you can. (laughs) Um, I am going on a road trip. Oh, yeah. In a couple weeks, actually. Less than two weeks, I leave. So we're going to have a couple guest hosts. Yes, So I'm going to record a couch cast with Lindsay, Bethany's sister, because she's the one going on the trip with me. So we're going to be on the road. road. Yes. And then Melanie is going to host in my place for one of our full length episodes about I'm going to Florida. Yes. Gonna, yes. They're going to record in Florida. Fun so fun. yeah, we'll have some fun returning yeah. voices, some new voices. It's going to be great. I know Mel and I are talking about relating to friends in different seasons because she got married and she moved to a new state. So we've got dealing with married friends, long distance friends, just how friendship changes as you get older and just dealing with the different seasons of that. So I think it's going to be such a good episode. It's, I'm really looking forward to it. We both, we've been talking on the phone. We're going to kind of do some content planning in the next week or so. And then I don't know what you and Lindsay are going to talk about. I don't either. We're still going to figure that out. We may pick one out of our, there you go. Or I'll have come you up pick... with your own Yeah, or whatever. If you have a question you want me and Lindsay to answer there on the road, go. send it to us. Perfect. We'll and we would love to. One. So got lots of fun things in store for you guys so stay tuned we'll be back with couchcast on friday yep but until then i'm Kristen, and i'm bethany and this is looking for the middle Mm -hmm.